Welcome back to Current80s.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Making Voting More Democratic, Desirability Conditions for Voting Systems. In this video, we will be looking at the infamous independence of irrelevant alternatives. Now, this criterion is somewhat more confusing, but once understood, it should be just as intuitive as the other criteria that we've looked at. Basically, the independence of irrelevant alternatives states that if candidate X is one of the winners and candidate Y is not, if any number of voters change their preference for other candidates, not for X over Y or Y over X, but make no change regarding their preference of X over Y or Y over X, then under no circumstances should Y become a winner. It might be the case that X stays a winner or X becomes not a winner because maybe there's some other candidate Z that gets ranked above both X and Y, because that's allowed. But it seems that in no case, if we ran the voting system and X won, and then no one changed their preference of X over Y or Y over X, and we ran the voting system again, and now Y is equal with X, even though Y didn't improve in its standing compared to X, or X is not a winner and Y is now a winner, it seems like we have a problem. Dictatorship is going to be one of the systems that satisfies this criteria. Imagine that these are the preferences of the dictator. We see A is the winner and D is not. This voter could change their preferences as to where B and C rank in comparison to A, D, and each other, but that should not make D a winner. The point is that A is a winner, D is not. As long as this voter keeps A above D, there should be no way that D wins. B might win, C might win, A might win again. But as long as A is still above D, there should be no reason that D wins. So acceptable ways to rearrange this would be all of these over here because a is still above D, and you will notice that in none of those situations does D win. Unacceptable ways would be those listed over here, and you'll notice that in, in fact, half of those, D is a winner. The point is that if we rearrange the other candidates in the election, but don't change A and the preference of A over D, it should not change the fact that D is not a winner. It might change the fact that A is a winner, but it should not change the fact that D is not a winner. At first glance, this does seem desirable. It makes sense that changing your preferences about other alternatives should not mean that something that was not a winner becomes a winner, or becomes tied with or ranked above something when you have not changed your opinion between those two alternatives. In the very last video in the series on objections to Arrow's theorems, we will give a greater analysis of whether this criterion is desirable and what our alternatives to it may be. So if you don't like the independence of irrelevant alternatives, there may be options for you. But for now, it is a criterion and it's one of the ones we're looking at and it at least seems somewhat intuitively desirable. The problem is that only dictatorship and one other voting method will meet this criteria. Before I give you the example, I want you to try to figure out on your own which one of the other voting criteria, or voting systems rather, that we have looked at will fulfill this criteria. Pause the video, give it a try. If you want some help, here is the voting profile we're going to be looking at. See if that helps you out. All right, well, hopefully you've either figured it out or given up. So let's get started. So this is the voting profile we're going to be looking at here. At this arrangement of votes, once again, take D as the dictator. H will win in every single voting method, period. It has a plurality with three to two to one to one. H is winning. It has a majority of votes on the second round of the runoff. 
It has a greater majority than J on the second round of Buckland, 6 to 5. It wins the board account, 16, 13, 8, 5. One on one, it beats I, 5 to 2, J, 4 to 3, and K, 6 to 1. So it is the Condorcet winner. And as we said, D, the dictator, selects it. So based on all of these different methods, H is the winner. Now, according to the independence of irrelevant alternatives, if I pick two candidates, let's say H and J. H is a winner here in all of the methods, and J is a non-winner in all of the methods. So long as we maintain the voters' preferences in relation to H and J, there is no way that J should even tie to be a winner. Note that voters A, B, C, and D prefer H to J, while voters E, F, and G prefer J to H. So for A, B, C, and D, I can't change it so that J is higher than H. And for E, F, and G, I can't change it so H is higher than J. But otherwise, I can change anything, because those other things that I'm doing are irrelevant to, or should be irrelevant to, J being a winner. Now, here's the realignment of the preferences. The preferences in relation to H and J have been kept the same. Note that A, B, C, and D still prefer H to J, and E, F, and G still prefer J to H. But the other options have been moved around. As you can see, for all of A, B, C, and D, H still outranks J, and for all of E, F, and G, J still beats H. But let's take a look at what each of these voting procedures selects. Now J wins first past the post, 3 to 2 to 2 to 0. So first past the post does not meet the independence of irrelevant alternatives. It also wins instant runoff. K is eliminated in the first round, and then H and I are eliminated on the second round because they're tied for two votes. It will take Buckland voting on the second round with a larger majority than H or I, 5 to 4 to 4. So none of these so far meet independence of irrelevant alternatives. The final numbers on the board account leave J ahead, winning 15 to 12 to 10 to 5. Yet the dictator will stand firm. Even though we could move J around for the dictator, as we noted before, H will still win for the dictator. And Condorcet no longer has a winner. But remember, when Condorcet doesn't declare a winner, that doesn't say that everyone's a winner. It says that no one is. And so a non-winner hasn't become a winner. J hasn't become a winner. And in fact, there's no way that J could be a winner in either of these methods. This means that they both pass the independence of irrelative, irrelevant alternatives criterion. Try saying that five times fast. So we will note that more than half of our systems do not pass the independent of irrelevant alternatives criteria. Only the Condorcet method and the dictatorship, which right now is doing better, surprisingly, than most of our systems on these conditions, might be a little frightening, will also pass. But something tells me it's going to have trouble with the last condition, which is non-dictatorship, maybe begging the question a bit there. So our last condition is going to be non-dictatorship Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.